Do you ever have trouble mixing your own orange, green, and purple without making mud? Well, by the end of this video, I'll show you exactly how to mix secondary colors without making mud so you can do it perfectly every time. For all the best lessons on painting a fabric color with acrylics, make sure you're subscribed to my channel and hit the bell to be notified every time I post a video so you don't miss a thing. So secondary colors can be tricky to mix if you don't have the right primary colors to start with, and I'll show you what those are in a second, but I get asked in my Facebook group all the time for how to mix green, orange, and purple, the secondary colors. Those seem to be the ones people have the most trouble with without making them muddy. So in just a second, I'm gonna show you the same trick I've showed tons of new painters for how to make those three colors be super vibrant every single time, and it comes down to the colors that you're starting with. So let me show you what I mean. Secondary colors, just to refresh your memory from the color wheel we made in a different video. Secondary colors are gonna be the colors that are made from your primary colors. So those include orange, green and violet. So these can be some of the trickiest ones to mix on your own, but I promise you, if you have the right paints to start with, you're going to have better luck mixing your secondary colors. So the ones that I like the most are gonna be quinacridone magenta, phthalo blue, and both of the Hansa yellows. You've seen those in other videos of mine, but I wanna show you a couple of other options depending on the vibrancy and what you're looking for. So I use golden paint, for no other, uh, no other reason than that it's really high quality, it's really great, the pigment is nice and pure and strong, so that's why I use these. If you invest in higher quality paint, I promise you will see a huge difference in your paintings, literally if you do nothing else. But let's keep going and practice a little bit. So let's start with oranges. So I'm gonna use a little bit of the Hansa Yellow Light. Let's just keep the caps off. Hope I don't stick my hand in any of it. Okay, so Hansa Yellow Light and Medium. One's just a little bit warmer, cooler, just two different variations. Actually, I have two different variations of all of our primary colors today. We've got Quinacridone Magenta, and then Quinacridone Red. I don't use this very much, but I just wanted to show you one other option for reds. If any of you are asking or thinking why I'm not using cadmium red, I tend to stay away from cadmium. Technically, it's a heavy metal. It's not really great to be breathing it in. It's completely fine as long as you're not like spraying your paint everywhere. But personally, I just don't really like to use it. So I'll get a cadmium free color when I can. So just using quinacridone instead. Quinacridones are also really transparent and vibrant. So that's that. So we've got our three variations all of our caps and yeah our three three primary colors two variations of each so let's start with orange so you want to use the lighter color first and mix your darker color into the lighter color so yellow is lighter than both of these colors so I'm gonna start by mixing a little bit of magenta if you made the color wheel with me you've already done magenta into this yellow but we'll just try it again. So beautiful orange we've got here. And now let's try a different variation. And you can just keep going through this until you're through all of your different colors. But the point is mix your darks into your lights and also your colors just have to be higher quality. So this is a nice pretty orange. It might not be as super strong and vibrant as an orange you might be able to get out of a tube. I use the pyrrole orange. I don't mix, I can't mix a color quite like that myself, but when I do want to mix my own orange, this is exactly what I do. Just these two colors. Don't go crazy. You don't need to add any white. White's going to desaturate this, take some of that color away. So just leave it there. If you want to lighten the orange, you're going to lighten it with yellow. not with white for reasons I just explained. So, okay, so there's a couple oranges. Now we can look at oranges with the quinacridone red. So again, mixing the darker color into the lighter color. This one comes out slightly different. And it's up to you to decide which one you like better. You can of course label them if you want. 
I'm just doing this straight into my sketchbook. Maybe let's see what happens if I make it even darker, a nice darker orange. So yeah, kind of fun. Maybe even a little bit brighter than these colors, which is cool. And then let's check it out with the yellow light. Whoops, throw out your paintbrush. I do that a lot. Yellow light and the quinacridone red. Awesome. So I'm going to give you a little advanced bonus lesson as to why this orange is actually the brightest. So when you look at your color wheel, we've got magenta and orange. We're in this area right here. The reason why the quinacridone red and the yellow medium are the brightest is because quinacridone red is a little farther away from the purple on the color wheel. Magenta is closer to the purple. We don't have quinacridone red on this one, but it's very, very similar to this magenta orange. So it's going to be warmer. And then the yellow medium is actually warmer too. So it's closer to orange. So we've got these two warm colors coming closer to each other. These variations, this yellow light is actually on the cooler side, closer to green. So that's going to take away from the vibrancy. And like I said before, the magenta is actually a little bit closer to purple. That's taking away some of the vibrancy too. So that's kind of like advanced color stuff. But for mixing secondary colors, it's definitely good to know. So things we've learned so far, higher quality colors. We can get in a little color bias as well, which way colors lean temperature. I'm going to do a whole other video on that. So if you were just like, what? Don't worry. So now we're going to experiment with some of our other secondary colors. And let's go green. Green's another tricky one. People always tend to have trouble. But all you need to do is mix your darker color into your lighter color. And you'll make a nice, super vibrant green. New brush, save a little time. Now we'll do some yellow medium, phthalo blue. These are really similar. And just experiment. Keep on experimenting. If you want to add some of the Prussian blue, you can see how that works. At the end of the day, you just, when you're mixing secondary colors, you just want to mix slowly using your high quality materials. That's really all it comes down to. I could say it a million times, but it's true. The higher quality your original paint colors or your primary paint colors, the better your secondaries are going to come out. Other things you don't want to do. You don't want to add white to your secondary color mixtures. Let me show you why. So I have a little white over here. I'm going to take this. It's not that you should never add white, but if you're trying to lighten your colors or keep them or brighten your colors rather, the second you add white to them, you're going to end up actually with less saturation. You're not going to get a brighter orange. You're going to get a less bright orange, right? You're going to get like a cream color. So if you want to make it brighter, you'll just want to add the lighter color, which is yellow, which I demonstrated for you right there before. So that's how you're going to make your secondary colors. I'll show you a quick purple. Let's see. Let's take some of the magenta, a little bit of the phthalo blue, gorgeous vibrant purple. Could even add a little white to it to really bring it to life. And that's really pretty. And I'll show you. We'll test that same phthalo blue with the cornacridone red, which, as I told you before, a little closer to orange on the spectrum, it's not going to be quite as bright. You can already see. I'm going to add a little bit of white to that. It's just not quite as vibrant of a purple. And that's because the quinacridone red is closer to orange on the color wheel. The farther away from purple, 
the less vibrant it's gonna be. The magenta is right there, super vibrant. It's gonna make a really beautiful purple. So I'm gonna make a whole video dedicated to the color purple because that is my number one most requested color when people are asking how to mix it. But this is how you create secondary colors. Choose high quality paint colors. If you're able to choose warmer and cooler variations of your colors, do that too. But to keep it simple, high quality colors, mix your darker color into your lighter color and just use those two colors. Don't add anything crazy to them and you'll start making secondary colors that are beautiful and vibrant just like these. All right, so tell me in a comment below, have you ever had trouble mixing orange, green, or purple? And then go ahead and try the tips I showed you in this video and let me know in a comment how that goes. And if you're wondering what other colors I use on my palette every single day to get such vibrant colors in my paintings, I've made a quick start guide to acrylic painting. You can get that below. There's a link right below this post. So you can download that. I'll tell you which paints I use, which canvas I use, which paper I use, all the good stuff. So if you like this video, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel for more acrylic painting videos, share it with your color loving friends, and then make sure you watch these videos all about acrylic color mixing too. And I will see you in the next video.